Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, I just want to address the, uh, the elephant in the room. I noticed in the chat uh, everyone was disappointed that I'm not wearing a smoking jacket. And I'm not, but I am wearing my D&D sweater. Uh, this is the lovely holiday sweater from WizKids that felt really appropriate considering it is now officially December. So we've got the fire, we've got the beholder sweater, uh, and we've got, uh, you know, 15 or 20 people uh, hanging out, uh, talking some D&D with me and watching uh, today. So as always, thank you guys for joining. Um, we've been doing these more regular now, uh, and your questions have gotten um, more interesting, uh, which I can only take as, uh, you know, lots of the other stuff is getting answered, and so now you're, uh, you're stretching the boundaries a little bit. But I, uh, I, did, I did decide to answer some of the crazier questions this week, too. Um, so first of all, uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you know that uh, today the Wall Street Journal and USA Today uh, just announced their uh, bestsellers for November, and I could not be more proud of the Dungeons & Dragons team. Uh, I could not be happier with the uh, response from our fans, but Xanathar's Guide to Everything is the number one bestseller on the Wall Street Journal list in the nonfiction category. So uh, let's just... Take a moment and uh, a round of applause to all the fine folks who made that, and thank you to all the uh, the wonderful folks who bought that to make that possible. Um, and that's going to lead me into, I think, one of the first questions that I think is on everyone's mind. Really? Nonfiction? Uh, and all I can say is, yes, really nonfiction, of course. What else would you categorize it under? This stuff is real. We don't make this stuff up. I mean, Mike Merrill's does not just have, like, some endless supply of made... Wait a minute, as I'm saying it, I realize we could be wrong. Mike Merrill's could be making this shit up. Okay, the only other reasonable explanation um, is that it's a manual. It's, a, it's like an instruction manual or a how-to guide, uh, so it gets classified under nonfiction. But uh, still, uh, the sales have been great. The response from fans have been great. I think uh, people universally uh, think that Xanathar's Guide is one of the best products that we've ever put out. Uh, which is awesome. Uh, it's one of the first big uh, updates in terms of player options for 5e that we've put out, so that's, op uh, that's awesome. Uh, and we frankly have more, uh, more players playing D&D now than we've ever had before, so that's awesome. So it, it is all coming together in basically uh, just a, a wonderful, wonderful year for us. Dungeons & Dragons is having its best year ever. And, uh, and it's really thanks to all you guys, uh, you know, not just the people watching, but all the people not watching, but all the people buying, all the people playing, uh, all the people who, you know, like what we're doing. And, uh, and you guys got to continue to, uh, you know, let us know what you want and, uh, and help us make it better. So with that said, I'm going to go to the chat for a moment just to make sure. Uh, I have everything. Yes, I know. Okay, good. The sweater is sexy. Whoever wrote that, Web Junior 1981, I, I approve. Uh, we call him Zandy for certain. Okay, uh, so uh, let's just jump right into it because I, uh, I gave a call out for some questions. Uh, I did ask everyone. Uh, I told you guys I was having trouble getting uh, questions and uh, could you give me some. So let's jump in. Uh, and I'm not going to go in any particular order. Uh, so I'm just going to start here with uh, Robot Austin uh, said, hey, you know, let's talk about D&D. &D. What, what do you think D&D &D in, the, in the next year? This is what I have to say about that. Uh, I think we're going to continue doing more cool stuff like we've been doing. Uh, we've got a great story planned for next year. Uh, some of you guys saw that Chris Perkins, uh, you know, uh, teased on Twitter that he basically has the first draft. Uh, done and, uh, and out of his hands and into other people's hands. Uh, I love next year's story. This is actually uh, probably going to be my favorite uh, that we've released so far for 5e for some personal reasons that we won't get into until next year. Uh, but it's a great, fun new story. Um, we also have some new, fun live streams planned for next year. We're going to continue uh, to dive into more video stuff. Uh, one of the questions that got asked was, you know, do we plan on doing any DM tips or new player tips uh, on YouTube or Twitch or anything? Or are we going to leave that to people like Matt Colville and, uh, and Satine? Um, and the answer is yes, we are planning on doing stuff like that next year. We've got lots of different uh, types of videos and streams that we plan to do for next year. So look for new cool, uh, different live streams. Um, 
and quite frankly, two or three fun product announcements for next year. Our goal always is to try and listen to what the fans are asking for and really deliver upon that, uh, see trends in what people are asking for and try and stay ahead of that. And, uh, and frankly, to kind of surprise you guys a little bit, like uh, kind of a surprise and delight. You know, I think that 80% of what we do should be really expected. I think if you guys tried to figure out what our next big story was or how many products we were going to put out next year, you'd be really close. We don't try and keep that a secret. Um, we do try to, uh, you know, have enticing stuff in there for you, but it, it shouldn't all be new and it shouldn't all be a secret. So, you know, the, the thing we strive for is kind of 80% just really delivering the expected in a, in a really awesome way. And then kind of 20% some stuff you weren't expecting and some cool new stuff. Um, so that's kind of, that's how I'd sum up next year. Now, Robot Austin also uh, asked, where do I see D&D in the next five years? That is harder to be specific. Uh, I will tell you we do have a five-year plan. Uh, I will tell you that my job specifically is to always be thinking uh, in the three to five-year range. I'm always a little bit less in the today and a little bit more in two, three, four, five years out. Um, so I think that we'll try and take what we have been doing um, and take those successes. You know, this is the best year D&D's ever had. We obviously have to keep expanding on that. Um, but... Uh, but we also have to shake it up. We have to keep bringing in new players. So we've got some different, um, different plans and projects in the mix to keep expanding the player audience. Uh, I think that we've got a great community and great fan base right now, um, but I think we can do much better uh, at um, driving awareness and interest internationally. Uh, I think we can continue to uh, age down the audience and, and get into some of the younger adults that maybe haven't grown up with D&D &D but would love it. Um, you know, when I watch Stranger Things or I see people cosplaying or I see casual fans watching Game of Thrones, I think those guys should be, those guys should be D and D players. Like, why wouldn't they be? You know, that person there, Lily Singh, if any of you know who Lily Singh is, she's amazing. She's a YouTuber. Uh, she's funny as hell. Uh, she does great characters. She does video blogs that, uh, are great. She's, uh, I think her boss is, uh, her book is Like a Boss. Uh, she is so funny. She is fantastic. She should be a D&D &D player. Like, everything about her says she would love playing D&D. &D. She'd be entertaining at it. She'd be, you know, she'd be great at it. So when I see people, when I see groups of people or audiences that are like, you would love D&D, &D, and they're not playing it, and they don't even know about it, I think we have to, we have to try and get those, get those people in. We have to try and either find the right product for them or find the right way to reach them. So in the next five years, you're going to see us taking some bigger swings at broadening the audience, uh, which will lead into answers to some of the other questions that you guys have asked. But that's the, that's the way that I would summate the next five years is continue doing the cool stuff that we're doing and really try and grow our products and our marketing to reach much broader audiences so that our D&D community on a global basis can just get much bigger and we can have more people to play with. Because at the end of the day, I mean, isn't that what we really want? We just want more people to play with so we can have, uh, you know, more, more games of D&D &D going. Um, okay. Uh, Robot Austin also said, uh, WotC really supports brick and mortar stores. Why is this? And then there was a subtitle saying, you know, they were interested in uh, perhaps starting a store. Uh, the simple answer is local game stores uh, serve an incredibly valuable role in the process. They provide community. They really go in... Your local, your friendly local game store has a great opportunity to actually be the community hub for gamers. Uh, you know, if you live remote, if you're somebody watching right now and you live nowhere near a game store and you don't have any regular folks you're playing in a D&D game with, you know what I'm talking about. If you're 100 miles away, like, it is really difficult to get in a game. And if you're going to do it, you've got to either host the game, but then you've got to find the players... Um, and, and this can be, you know, this can be a challenge. This can be the reason that you play or don't play D&D with your, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And so game stores provide a tremendous value, which is this community hub of like-minded people. You know, you go in there and chances of meeting a Dungeons & Dragons player are great. You know, so whether you buy your products online or buy them from the game stores, the game stores are just fantastic places for you to meet people uh, that want to play games, that that's their main hobby, their favorite thing to do. And in many cases, the game stores provide the space and the tables and sometimes DMs uh, and, uh, and food and drink, you know, so that it's kind of an all-inclusive. 
so we support game stores because they, they do something that is really critical, and that is give people places and communities to play with. Um, okay, one of our other questions, Michael Brown. What excites you about the realms? And he was talking specifically locations and favorite parts and stuff. So uh, my favorite part about the Forgotten Realms is, um, is the rich lore and the, and the history that it has. Uh, so much of Faerun is covered in so many different, you know, I mean, there, almost every part of Faerun has like hundreds of thousands of pages written about it uh, and, and uh, previous uh, works. And there's so much depth there. Uh, that really, I think, just brings everything to life. Um, and let me start, I'm, I'm going to say something, and I don't want this to seem like a backhanded compliment, uh, but l let me uh, start with one of my favorite uh, console games, console RPGs, uh, which is the Elder Scrolls series. I've mentioned this before, but I played you know, a few hundred hours of uh, Oblivion, uh, probably the same amount of Skyrim. Uh, and every time you're going around to a different house and you pick up the different books and, uh, and you're picking them up, you're you're just looking for the uh, you know for the the level up or for the um, for the stat uh, increase on there, uh, but you know you see the you know Wolf Mother Volume Three you know more times than you'd want to count, and I don't blame uh, I don't blame uh, Todd and his team and uh, the developers on Bethesda that they can't have unique books and everything. I know all the limitations on the video game side, and I know uh, you know that you can't just make up random names across the thing and expect that every book would be different and all that stuff. But what I like to think about in the Forgotten Realms is that we probably could fill all the shelves with uh, in-world books and items that are unique and specific because so much has been created there. And so I just think about going into different houses and, and different areas and that everything in there could be these unique items that have really rich lore and backstory. Uh, and I think that's just so cool and special. And, um, and so I like learning about it and discovering it. And I think it's you know, kind of a, a, a fun uh, aspect to having a world or a setting that's been around, you know, in Ed Greenwood's mind. I mean, it's been around for probably longer than D&D, &D, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's one of our oldest and most fleshed out settings. And so that's, that's one of my favorite parts about the realm. Um, one of my favorite cities uh, is Cormier, um, but I, I, like, I like that all the cities have different character and stuff. It, it related to the specifics, uh, like Marsember, probably not a lot of you guys have adventured Marsember, but Marsember is the city of spices, and it's got all this rich detail about who lives there and what's going on in this ward and that district and everything, and I think that's just amazing that there's a city of spices in Faerun and that we know about it. Um, in addition, uh, I said Cormier is one of my uh, favorites because um, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I don't want to call it an obsession, but I love the Purple Dragon Knights. And, uh, and I love this idea of castles and sieges and, uh, you know, kind of, I think you could have some really cool adventures in Cormier. So I keep pushing Mike. I'm like, when are we going to get to Cormier? When's our adventure going to go there? And he, he keeps telling me one day we'll make it. Uh, but Michael Brown, if that uh, hopefully answers your question, uh, you know, in general, the realms, I just like that there's so much history, so much character in all the different regions and stuff. Cormier is definitely one of my favorite places. Purple Dragon Knights are a big part of it. Uh, I also have a character who's a pastry chef, so that's one of the reasons that I've uh, enjoyed Marsember. Um, and then to answer your last question, epic rap battle uh, would not be between any members of uh, Forgotten Realms, but I'd like to see Venger and Dungeon Master in an epic rap battle. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we have the technology. I mean, someone's got to be able to like remix the cartoon footage and make that happen. Uh, by the way, trivia, don't know how many of you guys know this, not, uh, not sure if this is widespread, but Dungeon Master's uh, real name is Massimo, uh, so factoid out there for you guys. Uh, all right, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the, the chat for a little bit. I always feel like I talk too fast in this and don't want to rattle on, so um, Callum, how are we doing? Uh, we got a couple people in the room. Hey, Kurrigan just subscribed, five months in a row. Kurgan, you're awesome. Thank you. Um, Danny Hartel, son of a gun. Danny, are you are you trying to you trying to get me in trouble? When can we have a D and D themed Ren Fair? Um, Danny, why don't you take that on? Why don't you lead the charge on a D and D themed Ren Fair and let me know what I can do to help you get this off the ground? Uh, what do we need? Do we need sponsors? Do we need uh, exhibitors? Do we need uh, People, uh, you want to you wanna take this on, Danny. You know how to get a hold of me. You know where my office is. 
Let's make it happen. Uh, okay, she says she's trying. Okay, come in. Let's talk about it. Seriously, next time you come in the office, uh, you know, grab 30 or 60 minutes with me. Let's sit down and talk about, uh, and let's talk about uh, what we need to do to get that off the ground. Uh, Andre Zarta, question, Spanish streams. What's your intended audience? Um, I don't know if those are two different questions or not. If the question is, are we going to do Spanish streaming? Yes, I want to. Spanish and German, I really, really want to, to do them um, soon. Uh, we're trying to find uh, native-speaking Spanish uh, dungeon masters uh, to do it. We've been looking down in the LA area because we've uh, got a good space in there for uh, streaming where we do the Girl Scouts Glory, uh, and we think that there's a pretty decent chance of having some pretty good Spanish DMs down there. Um, but uh, Bart Carroll is leading that charge for me, and we have not gotten it off the ground yet. So we're totally trying, and we definitely, that's part of when I say we want to do new and different, um, new and different streams for next year. That's definitely, definitely one of it. Um, Tucker Author, question, any chance we could see a full updated Room map sometime soon? I will put that on the list. I will definitely put that on the list. Um... Wait, why am I the master of voluntelling? Are you throwing me under the bus? Uh, delegation for the win. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, okay. Uh, question, is there any chance we get D&D's Monster Manual Pawn PDFs? I don't know. Oh, I get what you're saying. Uh, the like cutouts and then the stuff. Uh, we're going to try and work on some stuff for that for next year, um, for sure. That question has come up, and I get that sometimes uh, uh, sometimes that happens. And uh, El Walrius, E-L Walrius, Spanish-speaking, uh, I will friend you after this, and we will, uh, we will talk. Uh, you don't have to be in L.A., we just have the space there. Um, question, no many holiday-based adventures to throw at my players this Christmas. That is from Monty Beth. And the answer is yes. This question comes up a lot. Uh, I think we've actually done some articles or something in the past. Uh, I will get uh, Pelham or Bart to, uh, to repost it under the uh, official uh, D&D Twitter um, in terms of what some good ones are. Uh, might even uh, be in the next issue of Dragon Plus uh, Digital Magazine, so uh, that would be a good place to look for it. But we definitely have some, uh, and, and we've definitely answered that before. Um, Uh, Cherbert 1701, uh, limited edition reproduction of the original second edition gray box, uh, Forgotten Realms campaign setting, it was beautiful. Okay, I'll put that on the list. That's, uh, we'll see if we can make that happen. That's, uh, that's not a crazy one. That's not out of the, uh, out of the, uh, question. Um, do I have a business email? Uh, Palum, if you remember, uh, why don't you do me a favor and hit Andre's start uh, with, my, uh, with my email. Um, add to that. I would also love to do Spanish stream. Yay, holiday games. Awesome. Nothing says Christmas like TPK, obviously. Um, okay, so going through here. Um, all right. Uh, I told Pelham that we were not going to do any giveaways today um, because I thought that we should just do like a giveaway special. Uh, so, uh, how many people are watching today, Pelham? 177. Whoa, 170. That might be my all-time highest. Uh, okay, well then this is a good time to announce it. Okay, so oftentimes what I do is I do a bunch of giveaways uh, on the uh, on the streams here. Uh, and it's stickers, and it's uh, shirts, and mugs, and things like that. By the way, someone asked, where can I get one of the mugs? I know, I know, the mugs, every time on the mugs. Hillary is on it. I've got like three partners now who are supposed to be making mugs, and it's just getting them out to market, and for whatever reason, it's so much harder than, uh, than it should be. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, we're going to work on it. But, not really going to do any giveaways today because uh, we'll put something on the calendar. I'm guessing like for two weeks, get you uh, something so that we can get it uh, in time so that people have it before we go on break for the holidays. But it's a, it's a very manual process uh, and it always falls on Pelham by himself to uh, send out all of the things that I'm so nice to give away. 
Uh, Pelham uh, mentioned that I'm the queen of voluntelling. Uh, I try to be super nice about it and not take Pelham or any of our uh, folks for granted. But yeah, I do, uh, you know, I do make all these commitments and then someone's got to help me do it. Uh, so this is what I thought. I thought we should just do like a holiday extravaganza in terms of giving out a bunch of swag and just do a show where we give out like tons and tons of swag. So uh, I'll work with Bart and Pelham. We'll get it on the calendar. Maybe we'll do it for two weeks uh, from now. Uh, and give away mugs and Janathar's Guide to Everything and notebooks and t-shirts and stickers and all kinds of cool stuff. But that, that'll be like the whole show. We'll just, we'll have different ways. We'll, uh, you know, do a bunch of the eye raffle and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, and we'll, uh, we'll especially uh, give away uh, things to people who use double spaces after their periods in, uh, in Twitter, because uh, I know Greg Tito loves that. Um, but, uh, but that is, that's the big thing I'll say about giveaways is we'll do a big giveaway show in two weeks where we'll just spend a half an hour, an hour, just giving away stuff and, uh, and have dozens. So that way we can plan, we can get a couple helpers, uh, to help Pelham, uh, package it all up and mail it in a timely manner so that it doesn't all fall to this guy. Cause he is honestly one of the hardest working guys on the team. He's behind the scenes, making these streams happen making them seamless. I walked in five minutes before the stream. Everything's set up. Everything's ready. Uh, so uh, we're going to um, we're gonna try and make it a little bit so that it doesn't all fall on him, but still gives you guys a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, so uh, Spectral Adventuring, you're my new favorite. Um, and, uh, and that's what we'll do on the giveaway stuff. So I'm sorry if people were hoping for giveaways, but if you tune in uh, when we do the next one, like I said, I think we'll try and do it for Friday, same time, do it for two weeks from now, um, and uh, and that way a bunch of you guys can get stuff. We'll try and get it so that you know everyone's got a really fair shot at, at getting uh, at getting some piece of swag and, and make it far and wide. Uh, so tell your friends if you like if you like cool free stuff and you like D and D, uh, we'll tune into that uh, special. Uh, you know I'll be I'll be Saint Nick and uh, Greg Tito will be my elf, uh, and we'll do that. Um. Agent Prometheus, question. With the talk of video games earlier, has WotC taken any notes from Games Workshop and opened up the IP so we could see more D&D video games? Um, I don't think it's a question of opening up the IP or not um, in terms of that. I, uh, I think that our, uh, our curated storytelling and some of the things that we expect from our partners is definitely... Um, you know, makes us a little bit uh, more choosy in terms of uh, who the partners would be. Um, but at the same time, we have a lot of video game stuff going on in the background now that we're just not sharing yet. So we've been working on it for a long time. I come from a big video game background. I promise you that uh, there's cool stuff in the works and, uh, and we're just of the mindset where, you know, we like to share it really much closer to launch and, and not announce uh, as much ahead of time, but I can tell you we're doing cool stuff. Um, also, uh, I don't know uh, when you say the video game talk earlier, I don't know if you were talking about the um, the Beamdog conversation earlier, but I would just like to point out that, uh, you know, Trent uh, from Beamdog, one of my good friends, and Philip Beam, from Beamdog, one of my arch nemesis, were on uh, before this, and so I just wanted to point out that Philip Daigle is, in fact, my nemesis and has a minus one to all saving throws, so if any of his DMs are watching right now, just know that that's still being enforced. Uh, okay, uh, what else? Is there any serious consideration to introduce any campaign settings for the coming year or next? Um, that is actually another question that popped up too. Um, so uh, let's go to, well, first of all, let's answer Jason Lance's question. If you decide to become a lich, do you tell your significant other or party members, or do you surprise them? Uh, and I think that's an easy answer. I think if you're going lich them, I think you surprise them. Uh, and that's a big life-changing event. And I think you just really come, you go out with gusto and shock the hell out of them all. So, Jason, if you're considering lich them, um, a think about it. It's a big step. Uh, but b, yeah, you just you know you you go down your path, and when you're ready to when you're ready to announce, you you go big. You uh, you surprise the hell out of anyone. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Stefan Johansson or Stefan Johansson, I don't know if I got the name right. Uh, new settings on DMs Guild are from Watsi, uh, and I think that's pretty, uh, 
pretty similar to the question someone just asked here, uh, Taz uh, Mokan, uh, Taz Makan, I don't know, uh, is asking. And I will tell you, yes, next year, uh, I promise that you'll see, uh, you'll see something from us in terms of new settings, either on DMs Guild or officially published, but you'll, you'll see some movement in new settings in 2018, I promise. Uh, I'm not going to say more. We'll announce that stuff later, but I promise you'll see it. Uh, also, I would like to thank Todd Kendrick. He just subscribed, um, but that's not why I want to thank him. Uh, I want to thank Todd Kendrick because uh, Todd has been a fantastic uh, part of the of the D and D uh, family this year. He, uh, I think, officially works for D and D Beyond, not uh, not us. But man, I see him around the uh, the office enough that I thought he was on my payroll. Uh, and uh, his videos have been great, and I love that he loves the hobby so much, and I love that him and his wife play D&D &D so much. Um, and so thank you, Todd. I appreciate uh, all of our fans, but uh, Todd's someone I obviously know personally and uh, just saw him subscribe to the channel, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, one of the other people. Uh, so who knows DM Lee? Does anyone uh, live down in Atlanta? Did anyone go to DM Lee's uh, stuff at DragonCon? Uh, DM Lee asked about uh, pocket guides or smaller things, uh, you know, so that uh, presumably so he doesn't have to carry around all of his heavy books. Um, and the short answer is not really, Lee. We, uh, we think that services like D&D Beyond, uh, you know, fulfill a part of that need uh, really well. Uh, and we're looking at other options to bring certain elements to life uh, more for the players at the table. So new products or tools for the DMs that might include some smaller, lighter items, but not really looking at pocket guides right now. Um, so I'm sorry that that's not on the, on the list, but who knows, maybe in the future, but not currently on the, on the list. Another question Lee asked was playtest materials. How do I get more involved in playtest materials? Um, and I think the, the best way, like if you really want to like, hey, where can I playtest new stuff and how do I get in that kind of network? Uh, I would tell you Winter Fantasy. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Winter Fantasy, uh, check it out online. I think it happens at the end of January. Um, and Chris uh, Lindsay and Mike Merrill's uh, work with Dave and the, and the team there. And there's a lot of Adventure League stuff and a lot of playtesting and a lot of materials that uh, either we test out there or that we source the people to test out uh, there. So that would be, you know, that would be a way to, to really jump in. Uh, and then his last question is Dragon Con. Any chance that we end up going to Dragon Con anytime uh, soon? And I will tell you that we are looking really hard at Dragon Con. Uh, not sure we'll make it this year, uh, but it is, it's high on our list of next shows to attend. Uh, so who knows, maybe this year, but definitely that is one that we are looking at hard, hardcore. Um, okay, uh, we already answered Jason Lance, so if you're going to become a lich, Surprise people. Um, El Rey del Sol uh, asked if there's any chance we'll see more varied choices for players uh, for minis uh, and uh, different uh, um, races from different regions and stuff. Uh, and that's a really good question, and it's one I don't have a good answer for right now. Um, but I will push this as a priority for the team. Uh, so I will uh, talk to our team and our partners working on minis, and uh, I think it's a really good point, and I think it's something we can do a lot better on. Uh, so we're going to find some solutions on that. So I don't have an answer right now. I think the answer is uh, I'll get people looking into it, and, uh, and I agree that we have the need. So that's kind of all I can say about that. Hey, is Bad Eye, is that, uh, is that Adam? Is Adam watching the stream? Um... We need a Goliath manager. We don't have a Goliath manager? I thought one came out with the uh, Elemental Evil uh, setting. Am I wrong? Uh, oh, it is Adam. All right. Hey, Adam. How you doing, buddy? Uh, so, Adam, you uh, will be glad to know, and I think everyone else uh, will be, uh, think this is a funny story. Uh, at, uh, we did the, uh, the live Force Gray in Brooklyn. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was uh, there uh, trying to help out from behind the scenes. And uh, we had a couple times when someone said, oh, do we have an extra, you know, monster manual or an extra player's handbook? Uh, and I just, I'm like, we got an iPad. And so we set up multiple iPads around the thing, and, uh, and all of the uh, resource checking that was needed to be done was actually done on D&D Beyond Live. Uh, you always worry about having, uh, you know, iPads for power reasons or connectivity issues and stuff when you're doing a live 
event, but uh, you know, it was so uh, so easy that I don't even think people noticed that uh, Dylan Sprouse was looking up animal stats and stuff on uh, on D and D Beyond for uh, for his druid stuff there during the show. So that was pretty cool. Um, okay, uh, what else do we have going on? Monty Beth. What is the process of applying to work with Watsy? What's, what's the range of positions? Um, well, uh, that question I think it can be broader, especially because you're asking ranges and stuff. So, uh, you know, we work with a lot of people. We, uh, we have a lot of uh, freelancers. We've got a lot of contributors or consultants besides the full-time employees. Uh, we do have a full-time position that got opened uh, just a little while ago with Mike Merrill, that I know we're in the middle of interviewing for now for designer. Uh, I can tell you that we uh, probably have a couple more uh, needs in the coming new year, so uh, definitely keep an eye out on the wizards.com uh, site for our new job postings. Uh, so we should have some more D&D stuff opening up next year. Um, in terms of the range, uh, obviously I don't think this is the kind of place where we talk salary range stuff, so I think in terms of the range of positions, uh, you know, it's uh, graphic designers, it's game designers, it's uh, story designers, um, art directors, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think what else in terms of uh, um, illustrators, uh, graphic designers, I've probably already said. Uh, on the marketing side, uh, you know, we tend to be more in the communication space, so whether it be in community marketing or events or you know, Twitch producers, uh, Pelham can use some help, uh, you know, on the, on the cameras and the, and the machines here uh, running in the, in the D20 studios. Um, so definitely, you know, the full range. Uh, uh, F, FM Estevez, I'm a full stack web developer. Uh, I don't know what full stack web developer is, so that sounds like that's cool, um, you know, and, uh, and I would definitely say on all of these things, you know, there's a bunch of people behind the scenes to do this work, and some of them work directly for WOTC, uh, some work for our uh, vendors, and, you know, and some consult and contract with us on a pretty regular basis. So, uh, you know, you, uh, you have connections to us, you're, you're talking to us on uh, Twitch, which means, you know, if you want to get those, uh, you know, get those names or those, uh, or those ideas out there, you know, there's always, there's always people interested in listening. Um, Bart, Leads up all of our web stuff for D and D. Um, you know, so when we when we're picking people and working with people there, uh, you know, he does that. Uh, you know, Greg Tito does a lot of our marketing um, and streaming and vendor stuff when it comes to events and stream of annihilation and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of uh, um, a lot of people who need to write and work on that stuff, and that's kind of more through Mike Merrill's and team. Uh, so you just keep your eye out. We definitely we're doing a lot of stuff. We're definitely doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and, uh, and so that's going to um, mean that we do need help. Uh, what other kinds of marketing are you thinking of doing for international audiences? Uh, and how uh, high is that in your priorities to bring D&D to new audiences abroad? Uh, that's a good question. And we are definitely looking at doing a lot more local market uh, activities and community-based marketing uh, in our other regions. We've got Hasbro offices over there, so we've been working with our Hasbro counterparts to... Uh, work on some plans and some activations there. So I would definitely say at the community and game store levels, we're looking to do uh, a lot more marketing next year. Uh, events, try and pick some big key marquee events uh, in regions next year outside of the United States to, uh, to work on and then do uh, um, some specific uh, streams and uh, video programming for those uh, markets. And then also hopefully as we expand, uh, do a little bit more research in those markets and see if there's some product specific needs that we can uh, accomplished by, uh, you know, by doing research with the users in individual markets and, and bring those out. Uh, last time someone asked me about, um, um, last time someone asked me about uh, the localization, I, well, I just want a brain fart, uh, localization, uh, and I've got the, and I got the list from Hillary and I meant to bring it in uh, and, uh, and I didn't, so this is what I'll tell you. I think France and Germany, you guys are seeing um, most of the products start hitting the market now. Uh, if you're not, uh, definitely look around because all of my data says that you should either have most of the product in market in place or it should be hitting your shelves really, really, really soon. It's actually in transit. Uh, so France and Germany should be sitting, uh, sitting in a good place. 
Uh, Spain and Italy, uh, you're, uh, you're close, but you're not there yet. You definitely should be seeing your player's handbooks out in the market. Uh, but the other products uh, might be uh, a little bit longer, but I can tell you that they're all at least in production. Um, and so those aren't too far away. Um, we're having some challenges in the other markets, but I do know that uh, Japan is seeing some uh, products hit the market too. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know if I'm supposed to announce this or if this is public, but I think that we're, I think Russia is going to be one of the other big markets that we expand into next. And so that's another opportunity coming soon. Um, someone asked if the Spanish was coming into Mexico or just Spain, uh, and I think that's a bit of uh, some logistics stuff going on right now where I think we will end up getting um, Spanish uh, materials into Mexico early in the new year, but I don't think we're quite there yet, uh, but we've got plans in place to do that. So I know that's a little, um, a little light on the details, uh, but we're definitely working on it, and and I know that uh, Latin America needs more D&D. I know, uh, and we are working uh, as, as best we can, and that is a high priority for us for early into next year. Yes, for Argentina. Uh, I know. Uh, we are working on it, and I promise you that uh, it, there's a lot of work going on in the background to make that happen. Um, do we plan on releasing theme dice uh, and merch for each season like we did with Tomb of Annihilation? Um, probably too late for past stuff, uh, but I kind of need a uh, Curse of Straw dice. Uh, yes, we're planning on doing more of those. We're planning on mixing up a little bit, trying some new stuff, uh, trying better, uh, better quality dice, uh, different uh, configurations, definitely 2D20s in sets as a standard. Um, so we're looking to do more of that. Um, not sure that we're going to go back and do any past stuff, but Curse of Straw. You know, it's a perennial. Might uh, maybe we do some special hol Halloween dice, uh, or you know, not Halloween dice, but do some uh, special product uh, around the Halloween time for Curse of Straw in case you guys are going to run some Gothic horror adventures uh, at uh, at Halloween. But that's a good idea. Um, question: I've recently started to DM. I'm wondering how many encounters I should prep for a session. Uh, that is a better question for Mr. Mike Merrill's or Chris Perkins or Jeremy or Chris Lindsay. Uh, so I'd hit those guys uh, um, on, uh, on Twitter, and they'll probably give you some good answers. Um, -da -da -da. Can the theme dice actually be the quality of what was originally shown? Um, well, here's the deal. The theme dice are going to be much better quality, and when we're showing you images uh, of the theme dice, we'll make it very clear when they're marketing images uh, and when they're actual products. And we'll try to get that switched over really soon. So I don't know if we're going to get the quality to the bar that you're expecting from the pictures, but I can tell you that in the future uh, we'll make a make sure that we note uh, when it's a marketing image and when it is final product, uh, and we'll try to get the final product images done uh, as fast as we can in the uh, in the process. Um, what is some good advice for players just coming to D&D? &D? And I got this question asked, and I think Tito is answering it a little bit online, too. Um, this is, uh, I don't know who asked this. Uh, Nicole Hunsicker, new to D&D, &D, want to learn more about lore. Um, so if you're new to D&D, &D, uh, if you're new to D&D &D and you want to, uh, some good advice. Number one, the best advice I can say is that the, uh, the website and D&D Beyond uh, are fantastic, uh, fantastic tools that are, uh, are free. There's a bunch of stuff on there, you know, and you should really be able to dive in really deep at no cost just uh, getting into it. Um, and the second thing I'll say is that the podcast, uh, whether you watch them or whether you listen to them, the podcast that, uh, that Tito and Shelly do uh, is great. Uh, Lore You Should Know and, um, and lots of the other people that they have on are really great ways to find out about resources to learn about what's going on uh, in D&D &D and give you some backstory on that and just give you a lot of the flavor stuff. And then secondly, I'll say we've been, uh, or thirdly, uh, I will say that uh, we have been doing all of the streaming because uh, research has shown us that streaming is what's bringing in a lot, uh, the biggest chunk of new players. And I will tell you that all of the DMs that are leading these streams, they are great resources for you. They love D&D. They're doing all this work, you know, uh, all DMs do all this work to, you know, to, to share it with their, 
um, friends and their and their family and, and spread it and everything. But chances are, if someone's streaming uh, D and D and DMing it, they they want to interact with the community. They want to engage. They want to answer questions and stuff. So uh, you know, just direct tweet to to these folks or to you know um, uh, Matthew Cernet or to Jeremy Crawford or Chris Lindsay uh, and and get these answers. But I'd say. You know, definitely there's a lot of great resources on our website for free. Uh, D&D Beyond is a great tool for new players uh, and a great way to build characters. Uh, and, uh, and then the streaming uh, gives you little tidbits on the lore and everything. But then also if you direct follow up uh, with the players and DMs from those communities, I know they want to talk to players. I know that they, uh, you know, are great resources and super passionate about it. Uh, and uh, and Elwarius just subscribed at the 4.99 sub. You rock! Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say that the, my favorite thing about Dungeons and Dragons uh, is the community, and the community is so awesome and so welcoming and so helpful uh, that even if you go to the D and D Reddit uh, stream, it's full of suggestions for new DMs for new players. You know, so there's just a great community of people out there who, if you just throw it out uh, into the wind, you're going to get some responses and some answers. And so if you want to know lore, if you want to, you know, get some good resources and stuff, uh, those are great places to start. Um, Nathan, what became of Sword Coast Legends? Wow, that is a tough one. Um, to be honest, Sword Coast Legends uh, developer uh, Endspace uh, ended up going out of business uh, after uh, 22 years of being an independent developer, um, which saddens me greatly because because uh, those guys were great guys and because uh, Dan uh, O'Leary uh, put his heart and soul into building uh, Sword Coast Legends, and uh, and I think that uh, it's one of the the tougher things because I was so involved with it. But what what happened at, at kind of a business uh, high level, taking some of the emotion out of it, is uh, is I think that the game that they wanted to build and the uh, and the game that uh, you know that they could make with the time and money they had, there was a disconnect uh, between what players were expecting, what they were hoping to deliver, and what the actual uh, production timelines and, and dollars uh, happened, and and ultimately it just it missed the mark and it wasn't financially successful. Uh, and uh, and unfortunately, it was uh, you know there was such a big bet made on that game by a lot of entities that it ended up uh, closing um, closing the studio, which uh, which sucks, which is really sad, especially in a day when there's not that many independent studios left. So uh, at the end of the day, I think the game was I think the game was really good in a lot of areas, uh, but I think that. Uh, you know, in terms of what players wanted, they were trying to do two different things really well: the single-player game and the and the multiplayer, uh, you know, real-time DMing. Uh, and I think that they couldn't uh, they couldn't put enough resources into both, and uh, and it fell a little short of uh, players' expectations on either one. I think that because they were trying to do such cool things on both sides, I think people who wanted it for the single-player campaign felt like it didn't meet their expectations, and then people. On the real-time DMing, uh, didn't quite uh, um, live up to what they wanted, and and sadly, uh, sadly, those guys have gone out of business. And so, Sword Coast Legends is uh, is still up and running. Um, you know, not much uh, support there for it, but uh, but that you know, it is a sadly a uh, 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 something that we'll look back on that will be one of the you know didn't quite hit the mark games, and that's that's kind of sad. Uh, Andre Zarda, coming to the end of 2017 and looking back at the beginning of the year, the goals you set for it, how satisfied? Uh, really, really satisfied. The, uh, the year has been amazing. This has been one of the best years in D&D's history. Uh, we've grown tons of new players. We've put out fantastic products that I'm super proud of. Uh, the team's worked so hard. Uh, we're, we're a small team internally. Um, you know, I think people sometimes are surprised how um, how small the team is, but the entire team are specialists. They're all super smart. They're all very creative. They're dedicated to what they do. They're some of the best in their individual roles. Um, and so I could not be prouder of what the, what we've done. Uh, on the marketing side, all the new streams, the Twitch channel that we're doing, the community that sprung up in here to support it, uh, the people playing, sharing, the number of DMs in the Adventures League uh, who are out there DMing at different events all on their own. I mean, this has just been a monumental uh, year for Dungeons and Dragons, and you know they've exceeded all the goals that uh, 
that I set forth at the beginning of the year. So to, to be honest, I, I couldn't be prouder. I, I couldn't be happier with the year and, uh, and I couldn't be more excited. I'm a tough one because uh, I am always working two and three years out. So I think that I saw you know, two or three months ago where we were gonna end this year and, uh, and I was really proud then before I was allowed to really talk as much about it. Uh, and then I immediately said, okay, how are we gonna make next year better and how are we gonna make the next year better? Uh, so that's always dangerous because uh, you don't want to um, you don't want to not celebrate the the wins and the exciting stuff that's going on now, and you don't want your team to think, oh, I can never you know I can never live up to the expectations because they have and 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 they do and they beat them all the time. So uh, the the short answer is I've got the the best job uh, on the planet. I've got uh, I'm the luckiest uh, boss a guy uh, could be because my team is wonderful. We've got a, a, a diverse team in terms of people and personality types um, and fun and backgrounds and uh, and they're awesome and they uh, they make my job really easy and they do really amazing work and um, so for me uh, I couldn't be happier. I'm just I'm super excited that the community is having such a fun time with it and I'm super excited that we get to grow the team and do new cool products and uh, yeah 2017 is uh, you know on a professional level has just turned out amazing. Uh, I'm also a, a husband and a father uh, and so we're really lucky that we've uh, you know, we've got a help, healthy, happy family. Uh, you know, we're really uh, blessed to, to have as much as we do in our life. So uh, you, you won't really hear me complain much. I'm, uh, I'm really, really, really happy. And, and part of my happiness is I get to come in here to work every day. So, uh, you know, if you, ever, uh, if you ever see me and you think that I'm down or that I'm, you know, thinking, oh, my God, we got to do better or whatnot, that's not a, a lack of enjoying the now. That's just, a, you know, I want to I drive. I think we can keep doing better. I think Dungeons & Dragons... Uh, should be the biggest, most popular fantasy brand in the world uh, ever, uh, and uh, and I'm going to keep driving and pushing uh, and helping the team uh, get us there and finding new people and partners to do that and everything. So uh, if you ever notice me being distracted with the future, uh, it's not that I'm not pleased with the with the present. It's just that I I I always want to I always want to be pushing us towards lofty goals. But 2017 has been amazing, uh, and we have tons of stuff planned for next year. So 2018 is going to be amazing. My message for the team when we uh, close for the holiday break is just going to be rest. You guys have earned it. Uh, you know, take some time, uh, you know, uh, re recharge up however you need to do that. Uh, but then when we come back in next year, we're going to do big stuff. And, uh, and I need you guys to, to be fully charged and ready to go. Um, so uh, we are coming pretty close to the end here. Uh, so, uh, I wonder what we should do here. You know what? Um, I told, uh, I told Helen we weren't going to do any giveaways, but we are going to do one giveaway. One very special giveaway. And Pelham's going to know where I'm going with this, but, uh, there has been a lot of, um, signings for charity events and different things like that. Oh, speaking of which... Uh, if this is not already on your guys' calendar, would everybody on this stream please do me a favor? Uh, Satine Phoenix uh, runs the Chera D20, uh, and I think that's coming up on December 9th, uh, and I want you guys to mark your calendar. Uh, I think that all of our players and all of our DMs and all of our fans that support charities and drive awareness for uh, charities, that I think you guys are awesome. I think that it's a really important role uh, that people play in the community. I'm proud of our community, so when you guys are supporting uh, charities and you guys are making an impact. I want to support you. I want to make sure that we're doing the right stuff for that. So if this is not on your radar, put it on your radar. I know she's working. She's broadcasting over from Geek and Sundry and they're helping out. Uh, and I'm super proud of all of our players and, uh, and DMs and fans when you guys get involved in things like Extra Life or this uh, charity or Movember. You know, but, uh, but make sure that that's on your list. Uh, make sure you've got that marked on your calendar. A week from tomorrow, uh, and help make that as big as, uh, as humanly possible. Okay, so uh, back to uh, the giveaway. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of science stuff. So we are gonna give away one, one lucky winner is going to get a alt cover Xanathar's Guide autographed by the Dungeons and Dragons team. So tell them, open up the floodgates uh, I will, uh, so what do you do? You do I raffle or no exclamation point raffle. 
uh, in here and you will be entered. Um, most of you probably already have a copy, either the regular edition or the alt, uh, but this one will, uh, you know, we'll take the silver Sharpie and get the whole team to sign the alt cover one. Uh, and actually, uh, I think we might be getting Hydro 74 to visit the office soon, so maybe we'll even get Hydro to sign it too. Uh, so those alt covers are a lot of fun. Uh, I'm a personal friend of Josh's and, uh, and a big fan of his work, and we love the, the stuff he's been doing in the alt covers. Uh, so, uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, and we're looking to do some more cool stuff with that in the coming, uh, years. So definitely keep your guys' eye out. You know, if I was to say one thing, I'd tell you that we really, really, really try to listen to the fans and that's not always direct. Sometimes you guys will say things direct and, um, and you'll think that, uh, you know, that we're not listening or not. We are. We listen, we listen to it all, but we also see what you guys are doing. We also look at the actions. We see what other people are doing. We just try to be really responsive to make sure that we understand uh, the pulse of what's going on in the community uh, and that we're making the right decisions for that. And sometimes it's not always a one-to-one. -one. Sometimes we have to make decisions that are the right long-term decisions that are not maybe the best answer to a short-term question or need. But I promise you that the number one consideration uh, that we make on all of our products and decisions is you know, what do the fans want and how is this going to affect our audience? Because uh, we're super proud that you guys, uh, you know, keep us uh, so gainfully employed and do things like make us the number one book on Wall Street Journal uh, and everything. So, uh, you know, so the reason that I do these fireside chats is so you guys can have a venue and get your questions answered and so that I can hear the questions. Um, that's why Mike uh, does so much on Twitter. That's why Jeremy does Sage Advice. That's why uh, Tito and uh, Cernit and Chris Perkins and um, and everyone does the say, uh, does the uh, lore you should know. Uh, so you know, so keep being a part of a great community. Keep making sure that you're talking to us. You're not always going to get the answer that you want, but I promise you, we're going to try and answer everyone's uh, questions and uh, and do things like uh, give away cool uh, you know cool products on the uh, on the raffle. But like I said, mark your calendar. We'll put up the official um, we'll put up the official uh, date and everything, but like I said, we're going to shoot for two weeks to have just a, a big, awesome giveaway show where we give away a bunch of swag and try and uh, get you guys a bunch of the cool stuff that you can't buy any place. Um, and uh, and I know that it's uh, challenging uh, that we uh, you know, and we're going to try and solve that for next year too, is give you a better way to buy a lot of that stuff more direct. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we'll keep uh, we'll keep giving away. So who won? Stag Stabby Rogue Games. Do we know Stabby Rogue Games? Have they won a bunch of stuff in the past? Is this first time winning a raffle? Awesome. Uh, all right. Well, Stabby Rogue Games, uh, it's going to take us a little longer to get it in the mail to you because we're going to have to get it signed by everyone. Uh, and if Josh is going to be in the office soon, we'll probably wait and try and get him to, uh, uh, to sign it too. So uh, that seems like a really uh, good one to end on. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. I want to thank all of you guys for watching all of our streams all the time. Thank our subscribers. A bunch of subscribers came on today and you guys are awesome. Uh, and thank you for supporting the Extra Life charity and all of our different charity events and, and supporting where you can. Uh, and, you know, and quite honestly, thanks for buying our stuff. You know, thanks for making, uh, you know, us have record-breaking months and years and, and keeping the, the hobby going and for supporting new players coming to the hobby, making them feel welcome. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm always so proud and honored uh, to be, uh, you know, a steward on this brand and to be a part of the community. And, uh, and I want to thank you guys very much. Uh, and, you know, if you don't know how to, uh, to tweet at me or get your questions answered, I promise I read uh, the Twitters. I definitely try to answer all the questions. And sometimes I miss some of them, but we're doing these regular enough now that I should eventually get to them. So uh, for everyone uh, tuning in, uh, have, a awesome, uh, have an awesome day. Uh, you know, good luck adventuring. I hope all of your roles are 20s unless, uh, uh, unless you're the DM and then don't get all 20s against your players. But uh, with that being said, everyone tune in to Tales from Candlekeep next after this, and we'll see each other in a couple weeks. All right.